All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for, for joining us for an exciting announcement. Uh, and now that you come in here, we do need you guys to quiet down. All right, so, all right, so, um, so um, thank you for joining us. This is an exciting day. I am pleased to announce uh, my appointment of Luke McGowan to be the next director of the Community uh, Economic Development Office. And I will be, um, we will be bringing Luke's appointment um, to the City Council for confirmation on uh, their upcoming June 3rd uh, City Council meeting, so uh, next Monday. Um, let me uh, share a little bit with you about why I think Luke is gonna be an outstanding next director and then um, give an opportunity for Luke to say a few words. We'll take your questions. Before diving into that, I, I do want to um, make sure I don't forget to thank David White um, for his double duty service for what's going to end up being a, basically a six month period of time. David has been serving as both our interim CEDA director and the director of planning and zoning, zoning a position he's been in for, for many years and has done great work in this dual role and really uh, helped us get us this through this transition uh, to this this day I also want to note that today is David's birthday and uh, we're kind of excited on his birthday to be announcing that we're uh, gonna be able to relieve him of the, the double duty uh, relatively soon um, uh, Luke would start in July uh, July 8th if approved so here here's why I think Luke's gonna be great so um, first of all Luke brings uh, a they're really kind of three big reasons, and then I'll say a little bit more about each of them. One, uh, Luke brings an outstanding balance of both public sector and private sector management experience. He brings um, some important experience uh, as a community organizer, bringing diverse groups of people together. Um, and finally, um, in uh, his roles in recent years, he has uh, worked in roles that has him ha had him in a lot of contact with entrepreneurs and small businesses, and I think he brings a lot of direct experience to that piece of CEDO's broad mission. So to say just a little bit more about each of those. So what do I mean by his uh, broad uh, public and private sector um, management experience? So uh, Luke's, Luke's career included serving as a community organizer for uh, Barack Obama's 2008 campaign, uh, moved around the country in a few different leadership roles within the campaign, went from that to the White House where he served as uh, Vice President Joe Biden's uh, speechwriter and then moved into a position in the Legislative Affairs Office, essentially, uh, he was a legislative assistant, essentially the deputy role there, helping the Obama White House push forward, um, uh, as we all know, an ambitious set of legislative proposals. He um, left the White House and then went, uh, joined, uh, uh, you know, went, joined the, the, the private sector in a pretty exciting way. He um, joined a friend who had a uh, West Coast startup um, when it only had 10 employees. He was, he was part of that initially very small team, helped uh, over several years that uh, company grow to be um, a approximately 400 person organization when he left and it's continued to grow uh, in the couple of years since since he uh, uh, left the leadership team um, so you look look at all that and uh, it, it's really um, I think well suited for this unique seat or you know, the community and economic development office so uh, we in this we expect CEDO to uh, support um, both our um, business community as well as our nonprofit and, um, and uh, community justice communities and um, Luke brings a rare quality of uh, having kind of served in, in all those in, in a number of those different roles I want to point out what he doesn't bring in he's not a developer he has not been someone who has been um, uh, you know working on big special projects that remains of course a big part of the CEDO um, mission and, and role uh, we are attempting um, with this appointment and some restructuring that we are taking to the city council as part of this budget process to um, uh, try to add some capacity to the community economic development office so that the director can be focused on the broad CEDO mission 
uh, and not drawn into the, the, the day-to-day management of these high-profile special projects. And uh, that's um, you know, part of why we, we selected a director with the skill set Luke, Luke has. Um, you know, clearly uh, one of Burlington's deeply held values, we, we de- deeply believe in the importance of inclusion and diversity. We've been a, a community that has embraced diversity for, for decades and really worked to become a, a more inclusive place. Um, I believe uh, Luke's background as a, as a community organizer, working with a broad set of individuals and organizations will, will serve him well in, in that piece of the job. And then uh, uh, finally, and I'll let Luke say maybe a little bit more about this, but the company that uh, Luke wasn't just working in the business community in this role with the startup, the company Thumbtack actually had a mission of, uh, and focus really, the business was to support entrepreneurs and small business businesses uh, in, in getting their job done. And I, I think that perspective um, uh, I'll let him speak to a little bit more, but it's going to be really valuable in this role. So with that, um, I'd like to say uh, officially welcome, Luke. We're excited to have you on the team, uh, on, on the CETO team, and we're looking forward to uh, bringing you to the City Council for confirmation next Monday. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Mayor, uh, and thank you, David, and thank you uh, to everybody who's here. Um, I, you know, first of all, just want to say how grateful I am to have this opportunity uh, to take this role. Um, I just met with the, the team, uh, the CEDO team, and it's really inspiring to see a group of people uh, who are devoted to making the city that they live in uh, a better place, a more inclusive place, a more just place. Uh, and I am excited to join in their work and help support in their efforts uh, to accomplish the goals that we've set forth uh, for ourselves. Um, So the mayor just went through uh, my kind of long and winding story, uh, so I certainly won't bore you with that. Um, But I think uh, this is a unique place, and CETO is a unique uh, government entity uh, that has uh, sort of a big mandate and touches a lot of different issues from social equity, to economic development, to community justice, uh, to lead lead paint removal. Uh, It kind of checks a lot of boxes. Um, And though that creates challenges, you know, from funding and structuring of the department, it also creates real opportunity. And I think the history of CEDO uh, shows that it has the ability to sort of accomplish the goals that uh, the people of Burlington want to see and want to see for their city. Um, and so I'm just so thrilled to have the opportunity uh, to take this on and do my part to help. So thank you, uh, and I'll open it up to questions. Um, so thank you again. Can you oh, just say yeah. a little bit more about just so I know the, what the yeah. TAC is and, and, and uh, yeah. how you um, work with businesses and entrepreneurs in that role? Yeah, so Thumbtac uh, is a tech startup based in San Francisco. So I joined a friend from college who started this company. Uh, with the idea of fixing how uh, we go about hiring local service providers. Um, So the really simple way to put it is if you have a leaky sink, uh, you can go on Thumbtack, uh, tell Thumbtack what you're looking for, and then within 24 hours, Thumbtack will share that request uh, with a network of plumbers who can then send price quotes on that job. So within 24 hours, you can select between uh, plumbers who can do a job at a price and you can look at reviews and so on. And so that was sort of what Thumbtack came out of. Uh, And when I joined, we were just uh, a few people um, working on this problem. And uh, by the end of my time there, we had hundreds of thousands of small businesses around the country using Thumbtack to find new customers. Uh, And through that work, I really came to understand that especially small businesses, uh, so kind of the sole proprietors, uh, if you think of sort of contractors, plumbers, wedding photographers, caterers, makeup artists, really anyone you can think of if you're having a wedding, kind of the folks you hire, um, it's really hard. You know, there's a lot of challenges. The big ones are finding new customers, kind of getting your job done, supporting yourself and your family through that job. 
uh, and cities and states and governments can make it easy or harder, easier or harder for you to do that job. And so I'm really passionate about figuring out, well, how can a city like Burlington uh, make it easy, uh, easier for small businesses like that uh, to make a living? Uh, and so I think that's a kind of powerful uh, opportunity for CEDO as a department uh, to look at small businesses in Burlington and, and figure out how we can best support them. Um, yeah, so I can say more. Uh, uh, I mean, that's good. <laughs> Why don't we open it up, uh, see if you all have any questions. Will you be moving to Burlington? Do you live here now? Uh, I don't live here now, but I will be moving, and I'm uh, going to be looking around for a place to live, so if you hear of anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be moving with my family and one-year-old son. Luke has been elsewhere in Vermont for the last couple of years. Right? Yeah, so originally moved to Vermont to be closer to family. Uh, so my wife's family is in southern Vermont. And we live in the Upper Valley uh, now. Um, and But we've always been visiting Burlington and loving it up here. And it's a community that I'm kind of thrilled to have a chance to be a part of. Can you kind of walk us through what you've been doing in the last couple of years? It looks like plus one, you know, what was that? Can you expand on that? Yeah, um, so last few years, so I did uh, a year at grad school at the Kennedy School. Actually, I know there's a few Kennedy School graduates around here. I can see Eric back there. Um, that was a classmate of mine. Um, so I was there, and then right afterwards, I uh, worked with a few different organizations, including Plus One, which is a nonprofit based in Montreal uh, that connects uh, artists and bands uh, with causes and nonprofits of their choice that they want to support. Um, but I've also most recently been working with a group called Mustard Seed, which is a social and environmental impact investor uh, that looks for sort of great uh, founders, young companies that are starting to grow, that have a mission to, to make the environment um, better or to make it more uh, socially tenable. So that's kind of the work I've been doing and also just setting up a business myself in Vermont and figuring out how to navigate things here has been a real kind of learning opportunity for me too. Uh, May, this one's for you on a bit of an unrelated note. You're aware of the um, allegations of racism against a Green Mountain Transit driver um, reported seven days. Uh, just your thoughts on that and the City Council taking it up uh, soon here. Yeah, great time. Um, so, uh, yeah, I did become aware of that incident, like many people in the community, through uh, email and social media uh, over the holiday weekend. Um, uh, we re reached out to GMT this morning to um, share our concerns about what we've read. Um, I certainly um, the allegations of what happened in are, are quite troubling um, and uh, I think need to be investigated and, and we're looking for GMT to, to uh, make a full accounting um, to uh, the public of uh, what their policies are, um, what happened in, in this instance the best they can describe it. Um, and uh, I do believe they've been invited to present at the city council meeting next uh, next Monday. So I think uh, by then we'll we'll hear more from them. But I, I will say we we uh, did when we uh, were in touch with them this morning find that they were had already begun an investigation process and we're already reaching out to the, the school district uh, to um, uh, just talk about what happened. So uh, they are they are they are moving on it. Anything else? Sure. Okay. Um, so you had said that this, your idea for this position will be more of the broader mission um, so that, yeah. that the director doesn't have to focus on the day-to-day -day of the bigger projects. Obviously, one of those is the mall. You had a nice story about how that's still not yeah. happening. Um, what will your role be in that project? Do you see CEDO being able to move along in any way? Both of you can answer that. Okay, great. Yeah, so the, uh, my vision for the position, this position going forward is that um, certainly the director will have some um, engagement and uh, participation in these major special projects like the, the redevelopment of the, the former mall. Um, uh, however, um, we uh, will be presenting, we, we had a conversation in the budget meeting last week and uh, I expect my budget will give the council a way to expand the capacity of CEDO, uh, to add an assistant director for community works is what we're calling it. 
um, that would be the senior manager manager in the city um, most directly responsible for um, working on projects uh, like these public project pub <coughs> these public private projects like uh, like that project but also just the purely city projects like Moran and and Memorial Auditorium, um, and that person I expect will be a real estate professional. Um, and the proposal that we'll be taking to the council, or the, the budget, will um, use a variety of sources that don't um, uh, require a greater draw on property taxes on the, on, on, on the taxpayer. So we're excited about this proposal. It's something that's been in the works for, for some time. It was part of the strategic planning process begun by Noel McKay and, uh, and that Neil Wonderville, when he was in the interim role, uh, move forward as well, and uh, it, it, it goes beyond just what I described to you there, but that's probably the hot, most significant element of it, and that I do think it is critical that the director be, you know, CETA is responsible for a lot, right? We have these major, mature uh, social programs that CETA is responsible for, the LED program, the Community Justice Center. Um, the, uh, we've added in the last couple of years programs such as the Early Learning Initiative, and the uh, uh, My Brother's Keeper initiative. Um, uh, we have a number of uh, small business support programs, all of which CETO uh, is responsible for, for managing and, and driving forward. And then there's a big community engagement piece to the CETO as well. And I do think, certainly my experience the last seven years, can't speak to before that, but is that the director, um, it, it has been challenging to uh, perform those other roles that we expect of CETO while um, uh, uh, while also keeping these high-profile, uh, intense, um, uh, high-risk uh, city projects uh, moving forward. So that's the vision for the position. If your question is, well, what are we going to do to get that project going, you know, uh, we, 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 we will continue to have lots of conversations about that. And I think this will be a significant week for this. Uh, you know, by the end of the week, we expect another um, public update of some sort from developers from Brookfield. They, they have been making some progress on a number of fronts. They've made progress with their financing. They've made progress that with getting a project out to bid. I think anyone who's ever been through a construction project knows that going out to bid is a key moment, a critical time, and, and they've just been uh, getting those bids back in recent weeks, and we're looking for uh, some kind of update from them on uh, where that process leaves them and, and how imminent construction is. This is for Lucas. I guess what are some of your priorities coming into this? Uh, as well? Any big ideas, I guess? Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, so certainly at the beginning, it's going to be about listening. Uh, and so starting just with the large team that I just met, uh, everyone has, especially people who have a lot of years of service, uh, they've got ideas. And I'm looking forward to kind of hearing um, from everybody about their role, what they've been working on, maybe how things could be different. Um, so spending that time and then my next priority is and certainly we'll be moving forward at the same time is really uh, hearing from the community uh, like the mayor was saying uh, CETO really uh, has a lot of touch points with Burlington you know kind of every nonprofit every small business every uh, um, person looking for affordable housing in some ways has kind of an interaction with CETO and so I really uh, think that at least in the first few months I'm going to want to make a lot of progress towards hearing from the voices who need to be heard uh, before coming up with solutions um, on my own. And that process is both talking to people who've always had a voice uh, here, but also bringing in new voices. Um, so yeah. And kind of jumping up that, you know, so you know, there's a lot of responsibilities in different areas. I guess what, from your experience, do you think prepares you for, you know, to adjust the wide variety of, of things that, you know, uh, overseas? Yeah, another good question. Um, so I think uh, kind of in throughout my career, starting as a community organizer on the Obama campaign, uh, it was kind of going from progressively, uh, in the beginning, small groups and small places to bigger groups and bigger places, and figuring out what do diverse sets of communities have in common and figuring out where that common ground is, um, and then continue that work uh, in the White House. And then at Thumbtack, I, you know, as I mentioned, I was working with small businesses around the country, and you wouldn't think, kind of at first blush, that a, a you know, Burlington plumber has a lot in common with a wedding photographer in Woodstock or San Francisco. Um, but actually, uh, if you kind of spend the time listening, you can find that there are a lot of kind of overlapping issues of concern. Thank you for that question. 
All right, great. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out and being part of this on short notice. And uh, you know, again, the next uh, step in the process is uh, uh, the city council will weigh in on Monday. Um, there was a we're, we're, we're optimistic about confirmation. Uh, that step will happen on, on June 3rd. Yes, great. All right, we got that. Cap on it now.